Hello and welcome. Today I show exactly how I restore a chimney myself. A stainless steel pipe is put in as well as a stainless steel chimney extension. For that I will also have to chisel, do some brickwork, grouting and plastering. I have talked this project through with the qualified chimney sweeper. Initially, I noticed that the chimney wall in the house was quite damp. Of course, with chimneys, sometimes it can rain in from the top. In this case, however, the cause was that the chimney was not completely grouted on the outside. So moisture was able to seep into the masonry for years. I will fix that with this quick mix grout. I moisten the grouts and then we can start. Here at the bottom, the rainwater has run behind the sheet metal. The old material is easy to scrape out. I think the grout is a little too wet now, but it'll be fine. It's just important that it seals the grout from moisture properly. Now it starts to rain and with the cover I want to prevent the grounding mortar from washing out of the joints. Down here it is especially important to prevent rainwater from running behind the sheet metal. The joint is so narrow that it is difficult to get the material in. The grout was already applied here before, but these gaps must also be closed. And so everything can harden for a night. The next day the stones can be cleaned very well with a sponge.
The old concrete chimney cover is porous and draws in moisture. It looks like it was made out of lean concrete. I work my way down piece by piece so that nothing falls off unexpectedly. The old stoneware pipe should be loose now. A new chimney extension made of stainless steel will be installed here. So I take this old thing down. I want to install ventilation grates here later. To do this, I will cut the openings now so that the rest can be easily taken out. Now I continue inside and you can clearly see that the chimney was once damp. Here I have uncovered the two cleaning openings. On the other side is where the wood stove will go. I decided to use the left side because it is better for the connection to the new stove in the corner. Now I have to chisel away a little bit so that the single wall stainless steel parts fit in here. The new cleaning door will sit much lower, so first I will make enough space. This fits already from the height and here should be the connection through the wall to the other side. 
Here I make room for the stovepipe wall lining. I try to make sure that too much debris doesn't fall into the wall cavity. Some people use a core drill for this, but by the time I get it and set it up, this would have been done three times already. The breakthrough for the pipe is now done. But for safety reasons, I want to close up the wall cavity surrounding the pipe. For this, I use some stones from the rubble. Because I want to avoid any possibility that flue gas from a leaky pipe connection can go into the wall cavity. So I close the wall cavity all around and smear it with mortar. So now let's look at the pipes. Here we have the double wall. Behind it a 25 cm length pipe, the fireplace connection T-piece and the inspection opening that goes on the bottom. And here's the maintenance door which is also made of stainless steel and still has the white protective film on it. The condensation tray with drain should not be forgotten either. Then for the top, I have enough long pieces so that the entire chimney can be piped. On the bottom of the first piece there are these holding tabs where a rope can be attached to lower the pipe carefully into the chimney. The standard pipe length is one meter long and I had measured out the chimney length in advance. All parts are made of stainless steel V4A with diameter of 150 millimeters and material thickness of 0.6 millimeters. It is important that the materials are officially suitable for solid fuels. All parts can be bought individually or as a renovation set, which is sometimes cheaper. I will link all shown products in the video description. Now I'll see if the lower components already fit into the prepared area. It actually looks quite good. The condensation tray goes here at the bottom. But the whole thing is still about 6 cm too deep. I use mortar to create a small platform where later the entire chimney can rest safely and at the right height. While that hardens, I take a look at the long pipes, because my chimney is a bit too narrow for the 15 cm diameter pipes. In consolation with the chimney sweeper, we chose a 15 cm diameter because that fits best to the wood stove that will be installed here. However, the pipes can be pressed quite well into an oval so that they later fit easily into the chimney. The chimney dimension is about 13.5 cm by 18 cm. The pipes can be pressed 
one to two centimeters into an oval so that the stainless steel pipes can be inserted with the largest possible diameter. I bent the drain of the condensation tray upwards so that it fits easily into the wall. I think there are also condensation trays without a drain. In retrospect, I would use that instead since the cleaning will be done with a sponge through the maintenance door. Now the parts sit in the right place and here comes from the other side the double wall lining. Now it's back to the roof again because I would like to put the long pipes into the chimney from above. Here I put a cord on it so that the elements do not fall apart when lowering. I'm curious to see if we can get them in so easily. And the chimney seems to be a bit narrow further down so the parts don't slide down by themselves. So I have to give it a bit of a push. But that goes much better than I thought and I didn't need the safety cord at all. For the last part, I use a piece of wood and a hammer, but you have to be really careful not to bend the edges of the top piece. Now you can see that the tubes all fit together nicely. Now I'll work on the rear ventilation openings for the pipes. With the help of a plastic pipe, I form a round opening so that the cover plates can be mortared on later. Both chimney flues get a vent so that moisture can escape well. Now I cut a walkway slab to fit. These slabs were smooth surface are made of concrete with high strength which prevents moisture penetration as much as possible. For putting on the adapted cover, I take the last piece of pipe off from the chimney. I chose these 50 by 50 centimeter walkway slabs because they fit very well on the chimney in terms of size.
Close the joints well here too to keep moisture out as much as possible. I think this is a functional durable cover which is a cost effective alternative to a for example stainless steel covers. While the mortar is still curing here, we can continue below. The large opening still has to be closed after all. For this, I use stone scrapes from the rubble, since only small pieces fit here anyway. After that, a layer of plaster can be applied. On the opposite side, I fit the stovepipe wall lining. It still sticks out a little too far, which means I have to cut off about 3 centimeters. Unlike the other pipes, this piece doesn't have a socket, so it can be easily shortened as needed. The length fits, so I can start with the mortaring. This area can get a little warm later due to the flue gases, but normal cement mortar is sufficient here in my opinion. With broadband putty, it is now a nice smooth wall surface, which can then be easily painted later.
The same thing, of course, on the oven side. The last long pipe was a bit too short and I ordered a meter piece which I now want to cut to appropriate length. I will shorten it to 57 centimeters. Here you can cut an extra centimeter off to make it fit properly in the first place. Again, I used the thick leather work gloves. Now I just have to get the end into the socket somehow. It worked. This looks good and an important part of the chimney is now done. Now I work on constructing of the chimney extension. For this I have this transition piece which connects the single wall pipes with the double wall extension parts. This is firmly screwed on from above the chimney. This maintenance flap is then installed so that the chimney can be swept from here later. Two one meter long pipes are then placed on top of it as well as this rain cover. The insulated double wall chimney pipes ensure that the flue gases do not cool down too quickly inside and can continue to rise well which ensures that the entire chimney develops a good draft. All parts have a 150 millimeter diameter and are connected with these clamps, which provide stability of the extension so that it can withstand strong wind. Everything is there, so now we can start the assembly. First, of course, the transition piece must be installed. No socket end is required for fitting the transition piece and it fits easily into the cut pipe. I align the component and mark the drill holes.
I have only pre-drilled here for the time being because I want to insert these 25 cm long stainless steel threaded rods M10. For this I will now drill a little deeper with a 14 mm masonry drill bit. I use a compressor that I dragged up on the roof to free the holes from drilling dust as well as possible. This is very important because I want to use injection mortar that must have the best possible contact with the stone. The holes are ready and I can prepare the mortar injection. This injection mortar has two components and hardens within a few minutes depending on the outside temperature. So you should not dawdle with this work. I want the holes to be really well filled with mortar so that the threaded rod has as much strength as possible. The perforated bricks swallow up quite a bit of mortar so that you have to calculate with the whole cartridge for these four holes. The nut ensures that the rock cannot fall completely into the hole. When inserting, I turn the threaded rod a little so that the mortar presses well into the thread. That can dry while we put these cover grates on our pre-made vents here. These also have an insect screen built in, so that not many pests can nest in my chimney. The injection mortar hardens quite quickly so that you can continue to work. I put the transition piece back on and trace the edges. This helps to apply this heat resistant silicone in the right place to seal the transition area from stone to stainless steel against precipitation moisture.
dessert already. Now it can be screwed on tightly and at the same time permanently seal the chimney. After that, the other molded parts can be put on immediately. I'll start from the top because it's hard to get to them later. The clamps seem stable and they can be tightened with a cordless screwdriver. First comes the maintenance pipe. And now I put on the last piece of the chimney. Put the maintenance door in place and we're done up here. That really worked out great with the injection mortar and also with putting the pipes together. Here at the bottom, we're still missing the cleaning door which is easy to secure into the concrete. I still have some of the heat resistant silicone so I want to make sure that no fumes can get into the interior.
peel off the protective film, attach the sticker, and you're done. The renovation and extension was really a lot of fun for me and I hope it was for you too. In the meantime, I have also built my soapstone wood stove and of course a detailed video will appear on my channel. The new chimney has a very good draft, especially due to the extension and works perfectly. It was accepted by the chimney sweep before commissioning without any problems. The cleaning door makes it easy to remove soot and condensation. I'm very satisfied with the result and I'm glad if this video helps you to do your own conversion or renovation at a low cost. My wood stove is the new warming center conveniently at the same time for the kitchen and living room because here I have made a wall breakthrough. I've also created a video for you which you can find on my channel. I wish you much success with your projects and look forward to seeing you next time. Thank you for watching, liking and subscribing. Take care and see you next time.